Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. Hey, Bob, you know, with the state of rock radio, do you feel like shows like yours and the CMS and others are going to have to carry the torch of metal? Uh, you know, metal's always been an underground movement, but do you think it's up to uh, those kind of shows to actually get the music out to the people? Absolutely. They're the only shows doing it. You know, who else is playing Iron Maiden, Hollow Be Thy Name? This is ridiculous. And now, here is your host. Bob Nalbandian. Love you, bye. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Elefante, yeah. uh, you sir. bullet boys Woo! here. T Radio V Inside Metal Show with yes. my guest. Mark Torian from the Bullet Boys. How are you, my friend? Uh, I'm doing good. How you doing? Really great, man. So blown. Just stoked, dude. Just yeah. Everything's been so rad. And yeah, a lot of I'm stuff. so glad to be here. Thank you for time. inviting me. Absolutely. And we were going to actually do a split show with, yeah. of course, Mark and a uh, good friend uh, of his and mine, uh, uh, Ira Black. Yes, brother. And we just found out he... Uh, I just, yeah, he just hollered at me and... and uh, you know, we wish him the best. He uh, actually had a blowout on his motorcycle, and he's actually in the, on the freeway right now, in the middle of the freeway. No, I mean, this is no embellishment. So I'm so glad that he's okay. I love him so much. He's such a, you know, he's such a dear friend, and he blew out a front tire. Yeah, that's. So he's, he's lucky he's okay, oh, man. Dude, it's just like insane. I'm going like, oh, dude. So he didn't have your number. So I told him that I would come. So, yeah. you know, shout out to Ira out there, man. Absolutely. If you can make it in late, Ira, if you do get the yeah, contract, man. you're always welcome. If not, we'll get, we'll definitely get you on an, an, another day. And uh, man, oh. sorry to hear about that. Oh, I'm sure you must be shaken up having a blowout on a motorcycle on oh, the freeway. Dude. I'm sitting That's here insane. nervous because, you know, it's, it's my friend. You yeah, know, it's yeah. like, God darn it. Yeah. You know, wow. so I'm so glad you're, like, dude, something bad could have really happened. And he's like, dude, I'm so glad. I'm so lucky right now. Mm. It's like, thank God. So. Yeah, well, yes, well I'm glad to hear he's okay. And we'll we'll definitely get to Ira back on here for those uh, sure. Ira Black fans out here. Yes. So we'll, we'll uh, continue the show, of course, uh, do the whole show uh, here with Mark, because you got a hell of a lot to talk about. Oh, my gosh, the yes. The new album coming out. When, when's the actual street date? We drop in Elefante. seven days, uh, wow. June the 9th. Oh, cool. That's the same day we dropped the Inside Metal Part 2. Nice. Volume 2. Volume 2 of Pioneers of L.A. Oh, uh, I love it. Metal. Yeah. So I love it. That's going to, which, of course, features Mark Torian in it. Oh, thank you so much. And then the second second one uh, is going to be coming out in, uh, looks like October, which oh, wow. is the LA Metal Scene Explosed, and that will, of course, have you on. That'll be from 82 to 86, so we got there a few go. quotes uh, from you on that one as well, and that's that's going to be the big one, all oh, the big one, the LA scene really I'm exploded. so happy for you with oh, that, too. You did a hell of a job, man. Thank you, man. Really, really amazing. Yeah, thanks for coming out to the premieres and oh, doing all the promotion and stuff. Oh, you kidding me? We've known each other for a minute, man. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Long time. Did I see you at the Saxon Armored Saint show? No. Uh, oh, okay. No, I saw no, Drew I was, there. I was, yeah, Drew came on I had by. a few drinks that night. Yes. Uh, a few nights ago, so I don't recall. But I like it. Oh, uh, yeah. But, <laughs> uh, it was a hell of a show. But, no, uh, yeah. man. No, I, listen, I'm so proud of those guys, too, man. You know, we're uh, um, we're all, you know, we've known each other such a long time. Sure, and the old Pasadena, really, really Montebello. Happy. Yeah, you're you're still in a Montebello? Uh, no, my, my, actually my family, my mother and father and uh, a couple of my sisters are, one in Whittier, one in Montebello. You know, but next yeah, man, week that's, that's, on our show. That's hometown, baby. Well, I got to tell you, next week on the show, and I'm going to make an announcement right here, we got the mayor of Montebello coming in, Jack Hegidian. Wow. Oh. Who's a total metalhead oh, and a I love great it. friend. He's amazing. The guy oh, is, man. The guy is uh, awesome, Aaron. He's done so much for the city. He oh, just yes. became mayor, and I see him at all the metal shows, the Iron Maiden man, shows. and I really need to hook up with him and, and go see him. He's the man, dude. Uh, Jack Hegidian. I'll tell you what. Next yeah, week. Love Check it. that out. The metal love mayor. It. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, isn't that great? Oh, that Especially wins. your hometown, man. That's so rad. Montebello. Oh, yeah, man. We, yes. Hey, listen. Montebello is... Uh, is its own, you know, community. But I'll tell you what, we're, I always call it like the Four Corners because, you know, you can bop into Pasadena. You're right next to East Los Angeles. Sure. You know, close to Hollywood. It was, you know, stone's throw away for me to, mm. you know, come into town and stuff. But, and yeah, I'll always
plenty of great bands as as we talk. Big part of it. I mean, a lot of people don't really know the history of you with Bullet Boys because Bullet right. Boys came on the scene a little bit later. Sure. On the LA scene. I Absolutely. think what, 88? Yes, 88. Was when the album hit, the uh, debut yes. album, uh, which was a fantastic album. And you kind of got, because that was when, um, you know, you were original, like I said, Montebello. You were old school LA, you know. Right. And, the latter 80s is when a lot of the bands started moving over to L.A. and the hair right. metal scene really got, you know, got yeah, a I'm little a, bit. I'm a real native, so, you Absolutely. know, I was born and raised here. And you've here. been doing it for a while. I mean, in, in the yeah, movie, you talk minute. about, um, in this uh, next upcoming movie, you talk about, obviously, auditioning for uh, uh, Ozzy Osbourne when you were 17, uh, playing, just actually, before Jake. Yeah. Actually playing with the band. Right, right. Uh, yeah, we actually did a, uh interview here as of late, and... Uh, mm. Rudy Asarzo and, and Tracy Guns asked me to come on with the, on Dean Del Rey's podcast. So mm. we chatted a How's little bit. How's Dean doing? Oh, he's great, yeah, man. Cool. I love him to yeah, death. Yeah. He's so such he's a great another old cat. school guy. Yeah, man. Bay we know area. him from way back in yeah. the day. But, um, you know, it's really interesting because uh, Tracy really wanted to bring up um, a lot of my past. And we started kind of like from the backyard days in Montebello when I came up here. Sure. When, when I was with, you know, my mentors that pulled me into the business. Um, Greg Jafria, Greg right? Greg Jafria, right. uh, you know, really introduced me in, into the Hollywood scene because, uh, you know, I was in more into the Pasadena, Montebello, you know, some of the thrash and punk rock clubs, Pasadena, you sure. know, um, Odd Fellows. Yeah, 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 right, right, right. right. And then so, of course, Perkins. Yeah, wow, well, absolutely, yeah. you know. So it's when I came in, you know, I was always catching the bus into Hollywood or, sure. you know, and getting in trouble with my folks and, right. you know, coming in and trying to, go into the Starwood or, you know, seeing, seeing Quiet Riot or what have you. And mm. people just kind of started knowing my face. And, right. you know, um, I, uh, my high school band actually played a lot at the Troubadour. So that's where I actually started playing my musical, you know, hard rock. And that was a shit back then. In the early oh, yeah, 80s, man. it was all about the Troubadour. Because oh, the whiskey dude. was kind of closed then, right? Yes, it and was the going through, yeah. were doing plays, and, like, they weren't doing much stuff. So really, in Hollywood, it was the Troubadour and Gazzari's. It was a little weird with the uh, new wave thing, too, that was right, happening at the right. whiskey, you know. True. So the Troub opened up their doors, thank God, to, you know, to rock and metal and, you know, that was thrash. My- Stomping Grounds too. I Punk rock. Know, similar age when I was 17, 18. Yeah, I was going up there to see Wasp and Armored Saint. Oh, yeah. And, you know. We still talk about time. the raw meat days so with there. Wasp, oh, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. shoot. We were there. It's like, it's like, man. We talk about that a lot so, in, this, in the uh, second it. movie. Yeah, some great stuff. Great story. But yeah, that's where, that's where I started. That's where I, I started cutting my teeth. And, you know, um, I was just very, really fortunate to have Greg Jeffria, um, who took a took me under his wing mm. we were rehearsing in the same place a place called rosemary's baby studio out in the valley right. and uh, a friend of ours close friend of ours uh knew my bass player okay. uh, and he said hey listen you know you guys are a really great band why don't you come out here and throw me a couple bucks there's some really great you know cats that rehearse here mm. and maybe you know you never know you know so here we go we're, you know they throw us into the baptism fire when we walk into this place you know there's missing persons there's Tim Bogard and and, uh, wow. and playing with Ed Van Halen and, 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 that's, and I think Carmine was playing with them in one room. Then you wow. got Angel in the other room. Right. <laughs> Excuse me. So here's these cats and here's this you know here's us coming I in and doing show. our thing right. And yeah. it's all of a sudden you know one day the doors open and there's Greg Punky and and Barry Brandt from Angel and you know I was a huge huge angel and fan. they were huge back yeah then. dude we're talking late 70s frankie domino uh, yeah screaming for and they know. lived in la a lot of people think i mean yeah, they were originally from uh, washington dc yes. baltimore area, but yes. they moved here back in uh, 75 that's when they yeah. got signed with casablanca and yes, it was bro. la was kind of their stomping ground yeah it was like were, you know angel to us yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah totally <laughs> they, you know they were like the the good kiss and then there was kiss you right, know exactly. right exactly so it was always that, and I always dug that, you know, their logos, one of the only logos that you can turn around. Yeah, I love that. That's yeah, so cool. tight. Yeah, oh, I love yeah. that. So now, you were known back then uh, as a shredding guitar player. Yes. I mean, a lot of people don't know that. A lot of people yes. know, and, and you've got, oh, thank you, you know, we'll, we'll get to your vocals in a minute. But back in the day, uh, you know, like I said, you auditioned for we Ozzy at the time. That. You were jamming with Ozzy. Playing you with did Ozzy. a little stint with Rat. Well, I was supposed course. to actually do, I was the guitar player in, in uh, Chosen for Ozzy Osbourne. In fact, it was on... Um, uh, in the LA Times, right, and right. Uh, you know, so I was the the guy. But w- what happened was, you know, uh, we we started talking about because me and Rudy hadn't really talked about it back then. He mm. was 
definitely one of my mentors. He took me under his wing. Rudy Sarso. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And uh, it was at a time, too, when he was um, still grieving over Randy's sure. death. Yeah. And so was Ozzy. So I came into that point when, you know, Brad had left right. and he was cl- doing Night less, Ranger. Yeah. And it, n- everything was kind of herky-jerky. So here's this kid from Montevallo comes in. And, you know, Greg introduced me to Ozzy and Sharon. And I played for him up at Greg's house. And, you know, I, I could play that stuff backwards and forwards and stuff. But right. um, anyway, to make a long story short, you know, uh, Ozzy was, you know, he saw, he saw my talent. And for all intents and purposes, was one of those cats, you know, that mm. brought me up and that realized that. And uh, Rudy was always, t- we, we were talking, and Ozzy was that type of person. You know, sure. he discovered Zach Wilde. He discovered Randy. Absolutely. He just knew, you know, he, he you know, he's so brilliant mm. to know some of the cats. Uh, I'm not trying to put myself in, yeah. in their uh, status as far as guitars, but uh, I had my own flavor. And, uh, you know, some of that crazy, some of that L.A., I, I call it L.A. S- like spastic guitar playing. Right. Everybody wanted to be Ed and you know, Randy, and, and we yeah. just, you know, I came from a completely different thing. My thing was Jeff Beck and uh, sure. cats like, um, like uh, Snuffy Walden or, you know, wow. those kind of cats, you know, like, I was coming for a whole different thing, Peter Frampton, and then you know, Ed came. It's like, oh my God, you know, Ed's just amazing. But I'd already been, you know, so it, it, this, I, you know, I came and up with And that was your age, style. that kind of uh, veered, because you were 17 at the time, yeah, right? Yeah, 16, and 17. Yeah, yeah, so, and that's kind of what turned off uh, Ozzy and Sharon in the sense that you were too, a little bit too yeah, young. Yeah, and I didn't really realize that, you know, for, you know, mm-hmm. This whole story, I'm sitting there at my parents' house. I'm waiting for a car to come and take us, take me to the airport because I was going to go to start to play with them in Europe. Right. But they never came. And I'm waiting a couple of days, and I finally got a call from Sharon. And she spoke to my mom and just, you know, was really honest and said, listen, you know, Ozzy thinks he's too young right now. We're still grieving from this thing, you know. And, sure. you know, keep the guitars and keep the equipment, <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, we love Tal, you know, we love Mark, but, you know, we're going to get, I think Bernie Torme actually came in. Yes, he and, did. And, and did a couple yeah. weeks, Rudy said, and then, then right. Brad came and finished it up. Right, right. So, um, so it was, it was uh, I was, dude, I was, I'll just be honest with you, I mean, I was very blessed to do, mm. to be, uh, to have somebody of Ozzy's stature to, have any want to yeah, have anything? So especially at 16 years old. You can, oh, we got to go into a quick break here. We're going to talk right. about uh, Bullet Boys coming up. Hell the yeah, new baby. Elefante Woo! album coming out next week. We'll be back in two minutes. Inside Metal Woo! Show T Radio V. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hubel from Welcome to the Jungle. You're watching T Radio V, aren't you? Radio on TV. Terrible idea. In TV. You shut up. (laughs) Use that one. (laughs) Hello, T Radio V. Hi, T Radio V. What's up, T Radio V? T Radio V. Thank you. How you doing there, T Radio V? Radio, Radio V. Radio inside of TV. Oh my God, I love it. Keep it locked. You are the bomb. Mwah. What better way? What? I can't think of a better intersection than radio and TV. Right? Yeah. What's going on? It's just Quentin down, and you're watching T Radio V. Which I love. Keep watching T Radio V. It's inspirational. <laughs> Does that sound like me? Hi, this is Katharina Vanderham with T Radio V. Ryan Neese. T Radio V, what's up? Hey, T Radio V. Thomas Sebastian, what's up? T Radio V. I love T Radio V. Because we need more kids watching TV. Hey guys, this is Chrishell Stouse. Hi, I'm Stassi. I'm Joel David Moore. I'm Frank Infante. Hey man, this is Rich Ramon. What's up out there? T Radio T Radio Beach. T Radio V. Radio in TV. Oh. What's the craziest place you guys have slept around? Oh, with each other or with other people? Because um, I don't know the answer in that. With case. each other, obviously. Oh, not obvious. <laughs> I don't know, on the pool table. <laughs> Maybe. He's got a big smirk on his face. <laughs> T-Radio V, this is Leslie Greif saying it's good to be seen. Thank you. My name is Reed Ewing. My name is Powers Booth. Uh, my name is Daniel Wynn. I am Molly McCook. And I am Jamie Brene Smith. And you're watching them on T-Radio V! Whoa!
<laughs> yeah, this is brand new Bullet Boys here. The song is Roll Over. Ow! From the uh, brand new upcoming album, Ella Ponce. The single is available, right? Uh, everything drops the ninth, Bobby. The ninth. Awesome. So we drop the ninth, and it's. Uh, yeah, man, we're st- ecstatic. But I know radio has got the single. They've been, they've been yeah, blowing they just up started, all over yes. the place. Yes, we're very lucky. Uh, we have skateboard uh, marketing, Mr. Munzee. Oh, Munzee. Um, yes, I love you, Munzee. If you hear this, you, you know That's how much old I school just New love York you, buddy. Oh, That's my man, Munzee. dude. That's my boy. Great at radio. He rolls marketing. hard. Yeah. And uh, of course, Nancy B. Sale, our publicist. Oh yeah. We um, all know she's Nancy. an angel. She was on our show last week with Stephen uh, Adler. Yeah, she's. We had to put her on camera. I she, love it. She hates. She, yeah, she, she probably hates me for it yeah, still. Chris Sorry yeah, there, too. Nancy. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, dude, and the production sounds amazing. Now that's Matt Thorne, right? You're old from actually Rat it is and it's, from Sarge. Actually, right? it's uh, it's uh, Ryan Green. Okay. Who Ryan is uh, the initial producer, mm-hmm. and uh, Matt came in. Um, uh, Breaking Benjamin Trapped. Sure. Uh, you know, he's done this is the same Matt Thorne that was in Sarge yes. and Rat, too, yes. right? And Rough Cut and see. Back in the day, LA yeah, history. man. And you guys yes. played together for a little bit while you were, um, or no? No. Then, okay. No, we did. we just but been really close friends. I never friends. knew that. He had worked with, you know, Disturbed and, and Trapped. Yes, oh, man. Wow. Good yeah, he's done some awesome. amazing records. So uh, I would just been really fortunate that we have this, we have a great friendship. And sure. I came to him, and it's you know Ryan at the time. And Ryan Green, he's done uh, tons oh, of Ryan's stuff. Man. Just, just yeah. an amazing cat. Yeah. Let, let's go to Ryan for a second. Um, Ryan's one of the only producers that's ever let me loose in the studio, mm. and whatever I wanted to do, right. whether it was just wacky, mm. you know, and everything. I've always felt like you know producers that they, they want to kind of confine you. Sure. Ryan, we, you know, he comes from a punk rock back very punk rock background right. so and i love punk rock music so it was this feeling of i want to do this and he says let's do that you know it's like i don't want to you know i'm i always try to tell people and i mean no, no disrespect no disrespect for this because i did uh write that song mm. uh smooth up but right. and i'm very blessed to have been able to write that with lonnie uh lonnie vincent so um i don't want to be known as a smooth up guy for the all my life sure, sure. and and i we have grown so much. I mean, Tencent Billionaire three years ago, four years ago, we released that, and you know, for all intents and purposes, hit number uh, Road to Nowhere hit number six on Billboard Billboard Internet with mm. Chavis Records. Right. Uh, Chavis Records went Bell Chavis, valley up, yeah. you know. But you know, kudos to Paul, uh, kudos to to Chavis because he knew he loved that record right. and really wanted to do something special. So here we are now, and you know, Ryan. We, we, we were able to do what we were able to do, but mm. at, uh, at some point he had to go and do this other thing and couldn't f- finish it up. It was pretty close. So, you know, I went to Matt and, and said, you know, Matt, you know, uh, can you listen to this? Mm. You know, I, I think together we could embellish on what we have. So he listened to it and he listened, li- literally, I'm no bullshit. He listened to the first song. Half the second song, he stops. He goes, "I'm in." Yeah. <laughs> That's goes, a great wow, sounding record, know. man. Oh, I mean, thank really you. Great sounding, and you and you're playing guitar as well as singing. Yeah, That's the, the, playing guitar. And my buddy, and Sean Duncan. Yes, drums. we got to give props Yay. to Sean, of course. Old school Odin and yes. DC Four, great new band. He's Finally, got his two brothers. And I'm glad, glad to see him, uh, you know, on on a record again. Yes, I know he's no disrespect to you know DC4. what he's been doing, but you know to. We had to call him up into national act, yeah. You know, and to, to so so people could witness this crusher of a drummer. That's my, my nickname from you know. I well, call it's great because Jeff is doing the Armored Saint thing, dude. Obviously on the side, and now you know. So amazing, yeah. you know, Jeff. Let me tell you something. Let's talk about Jeff. Mm. We've been friends for such a long time, and it's so badass to see him flourish and to be doing and flying all over the place. And, and he sounded you know, amazing. Because Armored Saint back in the day, they were not that popular. Mm. They were popular, they were but like they weren't that popular. They were like a big yes. underground. They never hit the <clears throat> They weren't as popular as the Bullet Boys. Right. They weren't number one on MTV. Right, they didn't right. sell millions of records. They never did that. So now to see their comeuppance as a band now, mm, it's, it's extraordinary to me. Mm. And it's extraordinary that somebody would say that metal's dead yeah. when you have a band like that that's just killing it. They were always you know, they just sold, like, you know, with Saxon and... Um, Overpacked. That was probably was, the that's most just packed brilliant. in the House of Blues. Yeah, that's brilliant. That's crazy. You know, that's just so cool, you know, and you'd never expect it. And mm. th- you got to give kudos to, to... I give kudos to my friends, Armored Saint, because of their musical prowess and that they decided to do a new record. Now, as far as Elefante is concerned, people can say what they're going to say, but, you know... At some point, 
I wish that bands from my genre would step out like we did and take a risk right. and say, you know, let's do something. For, let's just do something for our family, our friends, and our fans, which I encompass into one. Sure. And le let's not think that they constantly want to hear what we did in the past. Yeah, I don't yeah. think anybody. I don't think anybody. A lot of bands does. will do that. Well, think about I think you there's guys. that you fear there, though, up, with I musicians. Think, yeah, you know, yeah. I see that fear because mm. I, I talked to them yeah. and they said, you know, Mark, gosh, thanks for doing this, dude. What, why well, did you, you do this? And I said, why, why not? Yeah, yeah. You know? The thing that's tough, though, for a lot of bands, and I'm even talking the classic bands, like, you know, to take bands like Deep Purple and, and all that, they're always known for their hits. And there's not sure. radio these days to promote. I mean, and, and they put out some great records. No, all I these know classic that. bands I, no, are from the 80s and 70s, no matter how good the record is, the radio stations aren't playing the new songs. Fair it's enough. only through the internet. But, and uh, it's, you just get to classic. You well, know I mean, you know, you'll still get smooth up on MTV but, or VH1 Classic or right. whatever. And, my, my thing is this. I don't, I don't no necessarily one. believe in that mindset. Mm. In no disrespect. Uh, I believe that the greats always, uh, and I'm not putting myself into that. You know, I'm, I'm here as this little, you know, little band called the Bullet Boys and trying to do the best of what we have. But you got to try to have vision. And if you have that vision and if you're able to speak those words out loud, the words are extremely Absolutely. powerful, Bobby. Absolutely. And especially right now. And I have friends in terrestrial radio mm -hmm. that Bullet Boys, uh, we had the privilege of going into these places. And some of these people are still there. Some of them aren't. But we have the relationship with those places and with ra terrestrial radio. And terrestrial radio is still alive, honey. They're still out there. That's good to hear. You know what I'm I saying? Agree with I agree Last year on the I Quiet just, Ride Tour, yeah. I was out there. And I, I got to tell you, I went to several, many, many places. And... I was blessed to even be there and to have coffee and to sit down and they're they're playing a tester of symphony and you know the phones are lighting up and you know people are getting excited about stuff. I think you gotta, you know, it's I, I don't have all the answers of course, you know, mm -hmm. but I think that if you bring it with love and people are gravitate to the body of work and it's special and you're saying something, you know, I it it's it, something's gonna go. I mean, mm -hmm. what, some of my great favorite bands of. Definitely, uh, the Foo Fighters, uh, Queens of the Stone Age, um, uh, Volbeat, uh, Rise Against. Sure. You're not listening to the last song that they did, uh, Papa Roach. Right, they're right. always writing and they're always progressing and they're not living off their old laurels. And I think this is the problem with the hair metal scene is that people want us to live off our old laurels. Mm -hmm. And at some point, yeah, I, I've written every sex joint song you could possibly write, Bobby. Sure. I mean, we were the smooth up. How, are you, how else are you going to write another sex joint tune yeah, yeah, from that yeah. back in the day that was that, that, that straight was up? Great, sure. they, listen, they didn't even want to play it. Mm -hmm. You know, Mo Austin and, and Ted and the powers that be, Lenny Warnocker, you know, they had to come in and say, okay, you're going to play this otherwise, blah, 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 or blah, 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 blah. And we had to change it. We, the, they couldn't call the song Smooth Up In yet, so the song got changed to Smooth Up. Oh, really? You know, we got a lot of stuff. Mm. You know, we, it was <laughs> overtly sexual. Sure. I mean, back in the day, we, we did a video, Hang On St. Christopher. Right. You know, we had the devil driving the car, you know, uh, girls, you know, French kissing each other, mm. pit bulls flying around. Everybody's going, these guys are Satanists. The we're day, not playing this video. You know, it's like, yeah, and it we're crazy. trying to be these artists. And, you know, God sure. bless the, the, you know, the other, the other uh, original guys because, we, you know, we, we try to step out artistically mm. and you know we were always we we weren't cherry pie right, we right. were this band that did most of our well, touring in the really 90s the hair metal thing. I mean, people don't no. realize you came to a from a motown band you were actually yes, signed bro. to Thank motown you, yes when you were a kid yes a lot of people and did a record aware. with motown with the uh um motown what really changed me mm. uh when i was signed to that company i i learned a lot of humility from that uh from being told in in my face and to, uh, things that had happened to me physically in that company. Um, but I learned and they taught me. And, and the, the thing that they taught me is there always comes a time where you need to reinvent yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you can continue in this business, learn to reinvent. The, um, the great Benny Medina uh, signed me with uh, the great Carrie Ashby Gordy Jr., Barry Gordy's son. And they How had old were you then? Oh, my gosh. It was... Um, Probably about 19, 18, 19. Oh, okay, wow. So, um, and God, I can't even tell you, Bob. I still, I know it was many, many moons away in a galaxy far, far away uh, many years ago. But I still have the utmost respect for Benny Medina, who is a huge mogul with Handprint Entertainment, sure. manager Jennifer Lopez, um, that he discovered me and brought me to Motown mm. 
And uh, now, was this a solo project? That you no, actually, it was a it, it was a group that was already put together. Mm. It was called Cagney and the Dirty Rats. Oh, that's right. And uh, speaking of Sarge, uh, Steve St. James was actually the lead singer for the for the group. Oh wow! And Steve Santiago invited me to come in and said, "We need. I can't sing these songs, Mark. And there's some R and B songs. Mm. Would you mind coming down and?" And giving it a go. So it was an all white group or white uh, Latino. No, no, no. It's a, a two, two Latino guys okay. and two and, and two black guys. Okay. Wow. So uh, and the band sounded really good. You know, we you know the, we were re- they we were rehearsing from noon to sunset, man. Every single day, dance steps, moves, choreography. You know, it was a real Motown thing, and and the the vision that Benny and Carrie had were was amazing. Being as young as I was, I didn't see it, but to be able to be on an album with The Temptations. Sure. Uh, uh, Junior Walker played horn on the record. Wow. Um, Smokey Robinson, uh, the great Smokey Robinson, who I love with all my heart, was one of my first cats that took a liking to my voice and you know, wow. realized that there was talent there. And you know, um, Gosh, it, it, it could go on and on. The producers that were, I got to record at Hitsville right off of Santa Monica you know, when it was still there. Did, now, did that album come out? Yeah. Yes. Caller? Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go ahead. Uh, no, I'm Martin. sorry. <laughs> Thank so, you. So, is someone, uh, is someone come, uh, Oh, no, just a message to me. Oh, okay. No worries. But yeah, I mean, uh, my uh, career has has uh, taken a lot of twists and turns. Uh, now, did this album ever come out? Yes, it did. Wow, is we it actually, available? Uh, I, it's actually on vinyl, and probably I don't I don't know where you would find it, but mm. it is out there. Wow. Uh, I now, said, how did that lead into Bullet Boys? That actually, well, that led into um, Bullet Boys came quite a time after. I was working and doing different things, working on a project, and excuse me, Lonnie uh, Vincent was the new bass player for a band called King Cobra. Oh, of course. And Carmine. Of yes, with, with Carmine and uh, Mick and David, uh, sure. David Hensring. Um, and they, uh, he called me up one day and said, listen, man, you know, we need a singer. Uh, the singer's, you know, giving the band. I think you could do this. Just drop the guitar, bro. Can you do that and just, you know, front the band? And so I was like, yeah, you know, I'll give it a try. You know, no problem. And uh, and they were gracious enough to have me and come in and I, you know, sang some, some of their songs. It wasn't my, you know, my right. thing really. You know, it's more melodic type of metal type of was thing. Was this before the, their album came out? Or uh, no, it was original? when their albums were out already. Oh, okay. I wasn't yeah. aware that you were actually Yeah, so I was kind of like, oh. the, you know, the scab guy that came in. And, right. And cool. they were doing some shows, and we ended up uh, work, doing some work. But, you know, uh, I got to see how hard the business was at that time because Carmine was older then, and sure. he was very hard-nosed. And yeah. he, um, from me being in that band, uh, I, I got a lot of tough love from oh, him. Yeah. Well, but... Yeah. May I say that it was needed, and then we decided that we didn't want to be in to work with King Cobra anymore. And myself and Lonnie wanted to form a band, and we brought Mick along because Mick was over the the King Cobra thing, and right. uh, you know we came in, and that's how. We get ba- and basically you decided to continue as a frontman with Bullet Boys. Yes, and have Mick yeah. Uh, well, and I stuff. actually really wanted to play guitar too, mm-hmm. but there was you know. Uh, it's kind of like a conflict of interest at some point, you sure. know. I, I think Mick well, was back then it was Mick, a whole front man. Mick was really so trying to step out to and to be that guitar sure. player. Mick was, you know, the second guitar player in King Cobra. David did a lot of those leads, so, mm. and we we were very open for, for Mick, you know, to do that because I we saw the prowess in his his guitar playing. Sure. This guy was, you know, very aggressive and. You know, I said, wow, you know, this, this, and, and he was way more rock star than me and Lonnie were like, you know, this guy would roll around and he was, so it was, we, we got, you know, we were always trying to, um, me and Lonnie were very street, so right. we wanted to. I think we got to go in another break oh, we gotta here. Get we're going to continue on. Oh, is this it? It's oh, over? Oh, this is the show. Damn, oh, we're wow. getting the, Just, wow. you know, like that, yep. <laughs> I forgot we started out late. I, we got carried hey, away well, here. Hey, wait, hold on. Can we stop that, that song for a second? <laughs> Can real we talk, quick, oh, talk on, about the tour. About yeah, let me talk just real quick. Okay, we we got the Armed Alliance tour uh, heading out in July, and we'll be out July through August uh, with the uh, with LA Guns, Tracy Guns, with the great Rudy Sarso with Tracy Guns, uh, and we also have. Oh, the Rudy's Kill- playing with Tracy. Yeah, man. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, wow. I'm so excited! You, it's yeah. going to be so much fun. I love Tracy's solo stuff, by the way. Tracy's brilliant. Yeah, really He's, good stuff. I love him with all my heart. 
And we have the Killer Bee that's opening up Paul Chapman's band. Dude, you are and, well, Oh, dude. Are you kidding me? So it's going to be a night of, of, of music, and we're very excited because this is our first headlining tour in a long time. And very excited to have the great Rudy Sarzo and, and the brilliant Tracy Guns. You know, we're all lifers here. And to have those friends, uh, we're all supportive of each other. And, and you'll be playing L.A. at the Big Cat House show. Yeah, August man, August 15th. 15th. All the Main old stage, school baby. bands from L.A. Woo! are going to be coming. I think we got to head out there, Jake. Thanks again, and definitely support. Man, thanks Mark for having Torian me, Bob. And the Bullet Boys. Elef Elefante, Elefante drops, drops June the 9th. Week, June Check 9th. it out. It's going on. Thank you, everybody, for all these great loves and support. And Catch them everybody out, on the out road. there. Go to bulletboys.com, official ah. for the tour dates, right? Yes, sir. There you go. Thank you, Mark. We're on Twitter, Always Facebook, everything. Come and see us. Sorry Thank about you. the late show, guys, but uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll be back again, and we'll have Mark on again. We're going to have, uh, yeah. of course, uh, Ira Black on uh, again. Get them safe, Ira. I love you. All right. Take care. Woo! Thank you for turning in.